This is just a quick follow-up to my previous video in which I was looking at this Kunkin KP184 electronic load. I thought I'd make this video in response to a comment uh, relating to what may have been causing this instability problem that I was looking at and I thought I perhaps should clarify things uh, a little better. So the issue that uh, we were having with this load is that if I set it for example to 50 watts and turn the load on you can see here that it's ramped up to 20 volts and 2.5 amps and uh, that's fine that's um, a good response from the load and it's uh, kind of what you'd expect the voltage limit on the supply is 20 volts so it's ramped up to that and what it did when I powered this up is it slowly ramped up or relatively slowly ramped up the current and um, when it reached the uh, peak voltage that the supply was willing to put out then it just started increasing the current until it reached the power limit. Bear in mind this is currently set to um, constant power. Um, however if I turn the supply off or disconnect it or it drops below a certain level and then turn it back on again we get this uh, unstable uh, behavior and if you watched the previous video I had a scope attached and you can see that it's um, going through some very rapid high current cycles. Now I didn't really clarify exactly what this issue was and if you're not familiar with electronic loads then I thought it might be useful just to clarify uh, why I pointed this out. It's not that unusual, electronic loads quite often exhibit odd behavior um, bear in mind that it's, if it's a programmable load then it's a, an active device. It's um, got firmware it's running, it's trying to achieve certain targets. And the behaviour of this is, as I say, not unusual but the instability could cause a problem because of the very high peak currents that were being um, encountered. Now the peak currents were going well over 10 amps uh, and they are going well over 10 amps and that's what's causing the issue. It's the um, very rapid rising current caused by this electronic load is what's causing the issue and it's going right past the current limit of the power supply so what it's doing is it's effectively short circuiting the capacitors on the output of this supply and it did the same thing with the Rigol supply as well but uh, again I pointed out that the waveform on the scope indicated that the peak currents were a lot lower now, although I said I tried all the settings on this electronic load to counter it, what I did find is that for certain power values and settings, you can find a way to stabilize this. So, for example, if I come into the system configuration and I change the uh, ramp up, this is the current ramp up rate, and if I come right down to 1. And what this is doing is slowing down the rate at which this will increase the current. Now what I can now do is, as you can see it's running, if I turn the supply off and back on, this time it's stabilized at uh, the value that we expected to see. So in other words it didn't matter if the fact that when I turn this on or off, pull the plug out, reconnect it, it's fine. The problem is this makes it so slow in normal operation it won't track most usages but in this instance it can be uh, made to work. However just bear in mind that you can get around this in various ways but what you can't really do is start modifying the equipment you're testing unless that's the purpose to which you're putting the load. It might be you're designing a supply uh, in which case you, you might want to modify it to have stable behaviour but what you don't really want to be doing is chasing the performance of your electronic load to make your design work. It should be the other way around. Um, so I just thought I'd compare this with the performance of a, a more expensive electronic load and you'll see then immediately what uh, you'd expect to see with regards to the performance of the load itself. So if I connect this one out, I'm now connecting this load, so I've disconnected this load, this one's now connected. So if I turn the supply on, you can see we're now indicating the output voltage of the supply. If I turn the electronic load on, we can now see we're getting pretty much an identical performance that we had from this load, uh, except that now when I turn the power supply on and off, um, it's still stable. And you can see what's actually happening here is the 
uh, power has now uh, come to 2 watts uh, even though it's set to 50 watts and that's because the load has ramped up the current so quickly that it's reached the current limit of the supply before it's reached the power setting and so the voltage limit is 0.33 volts now there are several settings on this load that you could change to make it behave better one of those is the um, voltage at which this load assumes that the output should be turned off and it defaults to one volt and as we can see here it would need to uh, be a lot lower than that um, but also the ramp rate of the current rise can be modified in order to uh, prevent this uh, unstable performance with this load pretty much any setting it will be stable uh, with this load it needs a bit of um, adjustment depending on the mode it's running in and the supply it's connected to so as I said I thought I'd make this video just to clarify that with a cheap load like this you may have to spend a bit of time finding out how to adjust it to make it work with a device you're trying to test um, but it is pretty much always caused by the load ramping up the current too quickly and driving your supply into one of its limiting modes whether it be voltage or current and then the two start fighting each other if there's a setting on the load to counter that all well and good you can adjust it but as long as you understand what it's doing and why it's doing it then you may well be able to find a workaround but that's where spending the extra money on a electronic load tends to pay off they do tend to be much more stable the firmware seems to be much more able to deal with transient situations but they still operate in a very similar way and you can see but that by turning this load off and then back on we get a different settling point than we do if we turn the supply on when the load's already switched on so you can see it's now sitting at 2 watts whereas if we turn this off and back on it's now sitting at 50 watts so that's one thing to bear in mind this load handles this quite gracefully uh, whereas this load uh, it doesn't not only that but this load even when you change the slew rate of the uh, current this will still overshoot and peak at over 10 amps and um, that's what I was trying to point out in the previous video so apologies if I didn't make that um, totally clear